Thank you. Um, congratulations for the progress we've made uh, in this part of town. It's only there because the heart and the soul and the grit and the drive of these people. But when you have that, you need to have someone out in front. And uh, there's nobody better to be out in front than Ed McKibben. Ms. B, thank you so much for leading this part of town and all of us to try to do better and better every day. Thank you, Diane, for letting me say something. Appreciate it. All right. So, uh, it's a couple, they're not able to be here today. When I got started, I didn't have bills, so this couple let me borrow their SUVs, their minivans, to get started. And that's Ray and George Davis, and they're not here to give their award, but I just want to thank them, so let's give them a round of applause. Another one is Pastor Roy Duncan, who's a real good friend of mine. He has a church in East Texas and Palestine. He heard what I was doing in transportation and called me up and said, I got an old 1987 15 passenger. If you want it, come get it. And BJ Bass took me down there, it was nice and clean and shiny. And got my 15 passenger in 1987 and we've been going ever since. So thank Pastor Roy Duncan for that. <laughs> Billy, 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 Billy Bass, Jr., where you go? At this song. Did he leave? Anyway, B.J. Bass also was one of those that helped me to transport when we had too many people to get in the vans and the cars. So he came along and transported when I couldn't afford to pay him. So he helped with that. So I want to thank Brother Billy, B.J. Bass for that. <laughs> Byron Harris, come on up Byron Harris. If you all don't know Byron Harris from Channel 8, Byron Harris heard about what I was doing seven years ago and gave me a call and did a ride along with me. He talked with several of the riders, people that were needing rides to living wage jobs. And ever since he did that story, that took us to a whole new level. So I want to thank Brian for coming out and doing that new story and taking us to another level. Thank you, Brian. Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew heard about what I was doing to Dr. I call her Dr. Edna P. She got me connected with United Way. You know, she said something very interesting to me. She said, if they ever ask you what's your biggest need, you never do not ever say money. And till this day, I've never said that. And the money comes because Ms. P taught me, do, do what you do and let your passion bring the money. If you're just passionate about what you do, the money will follow. But I want to thank Dr. Francois, and I say her whole name now because I can pronounce it. Dr. Francois Booker Drew. Next up, and I, I don't think she was able to make it, Wendy Burton, who is the Chief Philanthropy Officer for Community Foundation of Texas, heard about me through Dr. Drew, got in touch with me, got me set up with a, 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 a what you call a strategic planner, and got me going, and now I'm connected with the Community Foundation of Texas, one of my biggest honors, thanks to Wendy Burton. So let's give her a hand. <laughs> Erica Flood is the one that did my strategic plan for me. And I met her through Dr. Booker Drew. And if y'all notice the pattern, most of these people God was sending in my life was all women. And I didn't understand it, but I understand it now. I couldn't stand none of them at first. But I love all of them to this day. So Erica Flood Mojo, thank you for all that you've done for me. Sergeant Joseph Childs. He's retired now, and he's looking sharp in that lady. Let me tell y'all what he did for me. He saved my business. Because when I first got started, I was riding dirty. I didn't have no proper driver's license. I didn't have no insurance. And I got pulled over by the popo. And my only big vehicle, that van that I got from Pastor Duncan, the police officer said, put it on the 
record and they was about to tell me I would have been out of business. Sergeant Child, Sergeant Child believed enough in me what I was doing. He said, take that vehicle off that record. And I, it saved my business because I would have been out of business had they told my vehicle that day. And he let know I really, how much I appreciate the fact that he loved what I was doing. Now he did tell me, go get my license and everything. <laughs> go get my insurance, and I did that. But the fact that he made that officer take my vehicle off that record saved my business. I want to thank you, Sergeant Child. Sergeant Carla Betson. Let me tell you what's so special about this brother. He leads the crew of officers. Have you ever heard of officers out here supposed to be arresting people? Instead of arresting these young men that are selling drugs, you know what he did? He called me, said, Curtis, I need you to get these young men jobs. So instead of taking them to jail, he brought them up here. Instead of taking them to jail, y'all don't hear me. That's how much he believed in what we were doing. And so a lot of the young men that we've been able to save their lives and get them jobs is because instead of putting the handcuffs on them, he brought them up here and we got these young men jobs and it changed their lives. So thank you, Sergeant President. Hey man, quit talking about Saints, man. I love the Saints. Casey Constable Thomas is not able to be here, but he's been a big mentor to me since I've been going with my business. I thank him for that. And then Tony Brinker, she also donated to, my, to the cause of what I was doing, and I appreciate her. So thank you, Tony Brinker. Honorable Constable Tanel Atkins, my vehicle broke down one day. I didn't have a dime to get it fixed. He gave me the money to get it fixed. So I want to thank Constable Tanel Atkins. And you all, the next person I'm about to introduce, about six months ago, she said, son, we need to do something for you. We need to plan something so you can have a fundraiser. I said, okay. Well, what I did was, I turned around and I looked at her daughter, Rita, and I said, you know what, Rita? We're gonna flip the script on So all this time, Edna P thinks this is all about me. Well, Edna P, I got you today. this later. So Edna, we doing it tonight and we'll get forgiven. There you go. <laughs> Y'all want to be real quick about, about this. This very spot right here, seven years ago, I was sitting there homeless without anything. I was despondent, I lost everything. This is my Moses. Edna P's office was right there. She was walking across and she said, Curtis, is that you? I hadn't seen her in years. You know when you go off and do wrong things, you get away from people that hold you accountable. 
She gave me a hug and everything. And then she told me, she said, Curtis, we need to help people get jobs. We need to get people two jobs. And you know, she don't ask you to do anything. She just said, now son, we got a problem, go solve it. She didn't know I was homeless. She didn't know I didn't have a vehicle. But I'm telling you, God can do anything with the ordinary people. Until this day, I tell my story, because people say, well, how do you start a transportation business without transportation? Well, when you got Edna P on your side, and Diane always tells the story how she fed a bunch of homeless people with a can of black eyed peas. Is it black eyed peas, Diane? One can of green beans. One can of green beans. She fed the multitude. And that's Edna P's motto is you, you take what you have and you do what you can with it. And I want to thank you, Ms. P, for believing in me. Absolutely. For believing in me enough to love me. Now, you know she'll call you 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. yes. If she yes. needs something. Diane, don't say yes, because you do the same thing. <laughs> but anyway, you all, I have a for-profit and a non-profit that by the end of this year, because of this woman here, we're going to make close to $2 million. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? All because of Edna Pimmons. So I can truly say, now I got some suits in my closet because of Edna P. From when she met me sitting right there, despondent, and a young black man that was about to give up on life. And so, Ms. P., I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. P. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it up for her one more time. Edna, can I get you to stay right there and get her daughters to come here? Okay, okay, if I can get y'all to take some pictures here for me. Real quick. She said real quick. Y'all better hurry. Y'all, if I tell you, if you haven't been touched by Edna Pimmerton, you ain't been touched. Go on, Rita. You know she's gonna wear out on us in a minute, Rita, but her up. Now, you know Edna Pimmerton ain't that good. She out yeah, y'all y'all might wanna chill, but she wants to chill. <laughs> she only gonna be nice for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, wait, I gotta take a picture of all these people taking pictures of okay. Paparazzi's ain't got nothing on what they do at that. Come on, where's the grands? Come on, she can come on. Come on, TJ. Come on, she wants her grandkids. Great grandkids. Come on, Edna. Come on. Come on. That baby said, now you know I love y'all, but this drink is pretty good. <laughs> Edna, we love you and we thank you. Y'all, if they ever let me roast Edna Pemberton, we gonna make some money. <laughs> Ooh, we gonna make some money. Y'all don't even know all the stories. Come on, Brian. Y'all know the city of Dallas threatened to put us out the whole city. Bridge over troubled waters. <laughs> we was about to be that bridge and in troubled waters. <laughs> you could never tell Edna Pimmer to know. Okay. Come on, we getting the grandkids together, Edna, so I'm trying to buy some time. Okay. Yes, Lord. You guys, when Mary Sue was the uh, city manager, Edna was supporting uh, our president, former president. Barack Obama. Y'all look here, look here. And so Edna had another group that was supporting Hillary Clinton. They told Edna she couldn't come in Fair Park with Barack Obama. Then Mayor Ron Kirk and Commissioner John Wiley Price called me because they scared to go directly to Edna. So they called me. They said, Diane, we love Edna to death. I said, I know she done did something when y'all start out like that. But she ain't going to be able to get Fair Park. I told her, I bet you my money on Edna. <laughs> Edna was in Fair Park with tables and chairs and Barack Obama. She sure was. That's Edna Pemberton, baby. Whenever you tell her she can't, that's when she will. That's Edna Pemberton, baby. When I tell you about faith, Edna Pemberton has that faith. So Edna, we love you and we thank you. So all the gifts you guys that you thought was going to somebody else, they're all going to Edna Pemberton. But we couldn't tell her that because she would have told us to cancel everything. <laughs> but we all going shopping with our daughters though. Yeah, we all going shopping. <laughs> so let's bring my aunt Linda Cullins to the stage.
And Ed, I need you to sit there because your favorite soloist and pianist is going to do a tribute just to you. So that's why we need you to sit there one more second. So come on up. Y'all haven't seen nobody took, took these keyboards, this ivory, they call it like my god, brother, sister, Gretchen Island. She practicing for my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> He is the best songwriter in the world. He's the colors.
teaching at Woodrow Wilson, and I had you come over to talk about uh, the Kmart and just some other things going on in the community. But I won't belabor the point. Once again, thank you for everything you've done and continue to do for us, Ms. Pemberton. Thank you for allowing me to spend a few minutes with you today, and that I do have your attention to say this is a warrior. We don't get many people who give of themselves day in and day out, year in and year out. So we need to continue to celebrate her while, while she can still hear us and still interact with us because at some time it's, 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 it's past time and that past time is when we're gone and everybody's trying to stand up and talk about what she did and how good she was and all that and she won't be able to hear it. And so let's celebrate her today while we can. Thank you again, Ms. Pimpleton, for allowing me to be here. And thank you, thank you, God, for allowing me to be on the program. Thank you. We can get you down here by the end to take a picture, please. Okay, next we have, we have proclamations. And Dr. Sheila Bailey just came in, so if I can get her closer to the stage, she'll be up next. And then we have proclamations from Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. Who's gonna bring that? Benetta? Oh, okay. Congresswoman, Congresswoman, goodness, Jasmine Crockett. Also, I have one here, Dr. Garcia, Commissioner Garcia, was here earlier, but she had to leave. But she did leave her proclamation where she's recognizing Edna Pemberton on her, let me say, year age, birthday, wishing her a happy birthday, a wonderful year full of blessings and success in all she does. Thank you for all you have done for the Dallas County community. Dr. Elbert Garcia, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kerry Goodwin. I am representing uh, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett today. We have a special proclamation uh, that we're presenting to her. Doesn't say very much here. I will read to you. Certificate of Special Congressional Recognition presented to Edna Pemberton today. Now, what will happen is that next week we will read into the congressional record the story of Edna Pemberton who will live on forever from the floor of the house. Co-worker Renetta Joe is out here somewhere, I don't know exactly where she is. But I did want to just say one story that I'm getting, some of you may have heard before. But when I was transferred to Dallas in 1973, I was going through training, and one of the trainers said, whatever you do, don't mess with Edna, because she will never forget. I uh, have never forgotten that, and I will never forget her, and I hopefully she'll never forget me. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Now we can have Dr. Sheila Bailey. Yes. If I tell you, I think it was God's prayers, and the love Sheila made the hand for us that kept me and Edna in Concord. Because we always stayed with one foot out the door and one on the banana peel. Because we stole from Pastor, Pastor Bailey. We actually stole a car from Pastor Bailey. Yeah, we stole money from Pastor Bailey. We just did it all. Now, he was there when he was doing all the stealing. He just opened his wallet to give a donation and we just took it all. Then he looked out the window and he said, Is that our baby? Until you know Edna told us, right? <laughs> But he had much love and respect. So thank you, Dr. Sheila Bailey. Thank you, Miss Community. A dear friend and to my dear friend, Sister Edna Pimpleton. Give it up for her one more time. You can't say it enough. My sister would love happy, happy birthday. You know this sister cannot sing, so I won't mess up your day. <laughs> so many stories that we can tell. I believe someone is joining this birthday party from heaven, and that would be D.K. Bailey and Reverend Darnell Pemberton. The Pemberton's made such an investment in the Concord Church. 
when the history is written and when it is told that the Pemberton's would have so much to be written about them. Not only Pastor Pemberton being the youth minister, but Sister Edna Pemberton. She's Miss Community, Miss Dallas, Miss Texas, Miss United States, running through a, a concord with the toys that she had for the Olympics and around the world. Edna, I have so many stories about you and my husband. <laughs> and the wife says that, people do, their ears perk up, but I mean they were great stories, great, great stories, the love that they had for each other. She knew that E.K. Bailey had a heart for the community, and he's busy preparing sermons, preaching sermons, and she would say, Pastor, there's some work that needs to be done over here in this part of town. Edna, what needs to be done? This needs to be done. Okay, Edna, you take charge. He trusted her so much, and you know when pastors just give you that kind of authority and that kind of freedom, that says something to let you know about her integrity. Uh, I remember going to the convention center simply because Edna Pemberton had got the word out that she was having a cause. People just don't give you the convention center and allow you to come in, but she had the convention center to her access, as well as the police department and so many of them. So my sister and then we were just sisters in the Lord. I didn't have a surgery. I didn't have a baby without Edna Pemberton being there. So I love you so, so very much. You know, Jesus in John 13 took off and put on. And when he took off garments, he put on a tie. And he says, I give you an example. Edna heard that and took it personally. Now all of us have some kind of towels in our house. We have bath towels, we have rag towels, we have dust towels. But we also have guest towels. Guest towels in the bed, bathroom, that guest bathroom. And if you don't have a guest bathroom, you have guest towels, and that means nobody touches those. Those were the fancy towels, but they were accessible to soap and water, but nobody's supposed to use them. And so how do we know you're not supposed to use them? Because there are napkins and paper towels right next to them. <laughs> there are people who have guest towel religion. We celebrate that the penalty because she does not have guest towel religion. She serves everybody, every race, every age, whatever it might be. My dear sister, I love you so, so very much. With E.K. Bailey from heaven, and from Sheila Bailey, Kokesha, Shaniqua, and Iman in the Concord Church, we're here to celebrate you always. Love you. Now, as we bring up Council Member Atkins, I have two stories I have to tell you guys. So, Sister Bailey talks about my husband who laid us with Dr. E.K. Bailey. We were feeding the homeless one time. So we feed the homeless, and one little homeless man was walking out the door and it was cold. And Ed and I, Pastor P, and Pastor Bailey were standing there. The man said, you know, it's cold out here. I don't have a coat, it's cold out here. All of us looked at Pastor Bailey had a nice, nice London ball, nice. Pastor Bailey looked at us and we didn't say a word. He said, I don't even know don't want me to take this coat off. <laughs> He didn't say anything. But guess what? Dr. E.K. Bailey took that coat off. Baby gave it to that man. But the look he gave us when he gave that coat. <laughs> <laughs> Only Edna Pemberton had that kind of effect. Our next speaker, Councilmember Tamea Atkins. Councilmember Atkins was on his way to Hawaii at the airport, dressed in his shorts and his little Hawaiian shirt. He was at the airport with his family. Edna Pemberton said, you better get him on the phone. I said, well, Edna, you, you know the man at the airport, right? She said, yeah, but they talking about turning the lights off at the mall. They don't want to pick up the trash at the mall. He got to come back to the mall. I said, so you, you, we can't do nothing over the telephone. She said, no. I said, well, I'm going to let you tell him right there. And true enough, Edna Pemberton said, it's about Jimmy Johnson Atkins was walking in there. I know they didn't think Ernestine was when was Johnson Atkins. Did y'all guess who y'all thought was Johnson that is so beautiful. But well, anyway, Councilman Atkins is somewhere here in the spirit. He's in the spirit. They had told me he was here, and then I looked up, I said, I bet they thought Ernestine Hudson was here. It's okay, though, baby. He'll be Councilman Atkins. 
Okay, so next we have a proclamation then from our mayor, Mayor Eric Johnson. Now, I don't do all the where asses, because once one where ass is gone, you all know where all the other asses are. So we're not going to do all the where asses. But we're going to end it by saying, whereas Ms. Edna Pimpleton is always on duty in Dallas, she remains unmatched in her leadership, and she remains unmatched in the amount of love, devotion, compassion, and grace that she has given to so many of us in the community. Her passion for helping others is infectious and inspiring. Lastly, above all, her strong faith and submission to God is evident, exposed through her lifetime of selfish service in people in the Oak Cliff and beyond. We will continue to see the positive ripple effects of her influence in the years and decades to come. Now, therefore, I, Eric Johnson, Mayor of the City of Dallas, do hereby extend recognition on March 25th, 2023, to Miss Edna Pemberton, this all-around town. Thank you all so, so much. And I get all the proclamations, and I recognize all the elected officials. Okay. Okay, next. So I think we're supposed to have a poem by Janine. Yes. And then Dr. Farr's Book of Truth. And then we have the final surprise for Edna Pemberton. Y'all should forgive me later. <laughs> church and we just want to give uh, reverence to um, sister or Miss Pemberton so I know it is the ending of March and March is also Women's History Month 
And um, we want to acknowledge and acknowledge the women and people who have made an impact, you know, in the world who are women. Martin Luther King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? And today we want to honor and celebrate a special woman who is constantly serving others in the community. She carried the Olympic torch back in 1996, and while she might have been physically carrying a torch, she was carrying something far much greater. She was carrying a belief, a movement. Someone described her as the glue that keeps everything together and the oil that keeps everything moving. She is constantly working to ensure that the work is not forgotten and it continues to remain lit and grow stronger. She's always lifting the community up, being of service to others, from organizing food drives to rescuing people who find themselves in daily disasters and proving relations between residents and police. She does all of this in an effort to make Oak Cliff a better place to live in. Every day we want to honor you, but today in particular, we want to honor the impact you have made and reflect on your accomplishments and celebrate the legacy and the work you have done. That is on behalf of Zion Baptist Church. We want to thank you, we love you, and we, got, we hope God continues to keep you and bless you. Southwest and South Central Redbird Outreach Center, or ROC, 
was brand new in search of community outreach opportunities. Mrs. Pemberton kindly took us under her wing and outlined her vision for improving the community. I remember making the mistake of saying that we would try to succeed in the things that she set before us. This is when she politely corrected me, telling me, we don't try, we do. I knew then that we were destined for success working together. Mrs. Pemberton leads by example. I watched in awe as she supported the opening of after school reading and activity centers and apartment complexes, organized police appreciation events, including July 7th commemorative programs, and fed those in need, just to mention a few of her notable achievements. Mrs. Pemberton is a stranger to no one and a friend to everyone. She is the glue that holds us together. I would like to personally thank you for your support, your wisdom, and your guidance. The author of Brian Pulsifer says it this way, a birthday is a time to rejoice, to remember that one is living for a purpose, and that purpose is more about giving to others than about receiving. Mrs. Pemberton, you have given so much to so many. We love you for who you are and wish you blessings, as well as the blessings of your family on your birthday. Now, we can get the officers to go down and get it. They're going to stand right beside you so you can get a picture. Uh, I just want to say that this was such a beautiful thing. Um, when I walked in and saw all the faces, that loved my mom. Uh, I was so proud of my sister Rita for putting on this, uh, and Curtis, and everybody else that put on this event. I was so proud. Uh, my mom deserved this and much more. She taught all of us how to give back to the community. We've been giving back since we was, since I remember, since I was probably five or six years old. On Thanksgiving, Christmas, we had to go feed the homeless. I wasn't happy about it, <laughs> but I did. So when all my friends were opening Christmas presents in the morning, I was down at the homeless shelter feeding. But I understood as I grew older. And so we continued that, and now we are part of organizations that do that for a living, you know, that do that continuously. So I am proud to be a part of the Primitive family, and I thank all of you for showing up today. <laughs> we got two last things real quick. Uh, real quickly, Hollywood, Jonathan wants to say something. I forgot all about him. Come up real quick. And then we got something from the old Kmart. Y'all remember Kmart? Yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm gonna erase you too on this Janet. video. <laughs> you know, Janet was one of the last ones to still work at Kmart when Ms. P was uh she was supposed to be the assistant manager, but she was actually the store manager. So Danny, come on, Danny has some roses on behalf of all the employees that Ms. P employed at Kmart Ms. P. I'm gonna erase you. I'm gonna erase you out the video. <laughs> And we thank you for everything. You started to let better bus. We walk, we walk, we appeal down, got paper signs. So that's how that bus go down, let better. Also at Kmart and the Pemberton is a lifesaver. Nobody knows this but us because we was there. A lady had a baby in a buggy and the buggy flipped over 
and the Hispanic lady, she didn't know what to do. The baby was turning color. She gave it to Edna. Edna brought life back into that baby. And I just thank God I was there to witness that with her gift that she had. She is loved always. Thank you, Miss B. Okay, you all, one last thing before we do this, one last special thing. On your table is a card with a QR code. Y'all, y'all gotta help me out here. Y'all know Edna Pippen to try to feed 10,000 people with two loaves of bread. Y'all know how she is. This is all I ask you to do, is consider scanning that QR code and making a donation to this wonderful woman's work. That's all we ask you to do so she can quit asking me to give her money. <laughs> So if you would be so kind as to scan that QR code, I'll go to honoringedmp.com and just make a small donation so that she can uh, try to stop trying to see 10000 in two hours. Well, let me let you know. small donations, baby. We come in large. Let me ask you a question. Come on up, sir. He wants to tell us, sir. But here's how I'm going to do this, okay? Here's what I'm going to do. Now, if you know Edna Pemberton, you know Edna Pemberton. Councilwoman Monica Alonzo, thank you so much for coming out. So, let me ask you a question. If Ann Pemberton called you between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., stand please. please. If you, you ever got a call from Ann between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., okay? Now, if you never called Ann Pemberton and you needed some help, no, no, keep saying it, everybody keep saying it. If you needed some help and you called Ann Pemberton and she delivered, let me see you say it. Say it, say it, come on. I'm just sitting there and say, if your back was up against the wall and you needed a warrior to come and just stand with you, didn't say nothing, but Edna Pemberton was there, stand please. If you needed some money, or she needed the money, and you gave a donation on behalf of whatever she was doing, stand please. If you went to Concord Baptist Church, you're on 3410 Polk Street, and you remember Fido? Fight up, stand please, y'all go up, fight up, stand please. If you was a part of the Dallas chapter of the NAACP, stand please. If they have to help you or somebody you know or some of your kids get a job at Kmart, stand please. See, everybody that told me story about Edna Pilkington. Thank you all so much for those brief stories. Here's our final one, baby. God, come in, you see you had a story. That was your story? Okay, when they go sit down. What did I tell her or did I tell her? Okay. Oh. <laughs> My name is Frank. You know, this is an E.K. Bailey, Edna Pemberton story. I got a call. It was probably after midnight. After midnight. And we had home phones back then, no cell phones, so only a residence. This is Edna Pemberton. I need to speak to Frank O'Neill this evening. Uh, Pastor Bailey says you need a job. I said, well, yeah, I do. Can you make your way up to Kmart or Let Better? I know where that is. Uh, what time is the interview? It's not going to be an interview. You're going to work <laughs> in the what was it, uh, security uh, loss prevention. So this has been a friend and been a part of my village, my family's village, for quite some time. I'm glad to be here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys, here's the final story. But it was a real thing, and we couldn't get it to connect. We were trying to actually get Vice President Kamala Harris to wish Edna Pilkington a happy birthday. I'm still waiting on men y'all more, but don't look like they're gonna make this call. But they were supposed to wish Miss Edna Pilkington a happy birthday. So now you guys, here's the other thing. The final story. Uh, where's Shelly Green? Rick Jordan. Rick Jordan, I'm gonna need you to close this out in the prayer when we finish this. So you guys, y'all know I love my friend Edna Pilkington. I promise you I love it. It was May 5th. It was May 5th, y'all. I love me some Edna Pemberton. Now, Edna has had me in some really close calls. Edna has had us almost, I'm like, Edna, we going to jail today. We just going. You know I'm claustrophobic, but we going. But I got to go with my friend. Mike Lee is here. Where is he? Mike Lee was in charge of the FBI agent. Uh, FBI, uh, did Mike Lee leave? There he is. Mike Lee. Mike Lee. So then they called us and told us that it was the FBI. I was like, oh, Lord, what the they got us into now? But they were actually honoring Edna. They came to Concord to give her an award for her community service. 
But one day I was at my works, had just got back in town. So I'm going to my friend to try to get comfort from her. But Pastor P was in the hospital. So we go to the hospital. Me and Edna just talking, just talking. We ain't got a clue what's going on in the hospital now. But Pastor P is engaging in the conversation with us. We was going to do something for the Mavericks. Pastor P told us, if you're going to do it, just do it and stop talking about it. I was like, oh, Lord. So you, Pastor P, is the one that always can save us. But this time he was telling us to go and do it. So Edna and I still talking. And then the lady came in and said, well, we're going to have to get a hospital bed at the house. So Edna said, okay. But y'all, we still trying to do this event for the Mavericks. Still don't have a clue what's going on. So finally, all of a sudden, everything started happening. And so Pastor P said, open the windows, open the windows. Edna said, open the windows, Diane. I'm like, open the windows. So I go to try to open the windows in the hospital, and they are sealed solid seal, but we still trying to open a window here. Now, I'm telling you guys, to show you how out, out of touch Ed and I was, we had no idea Pastor P was making his transition at the time. That's just how out of touch we were. So we still trying to open windows. Then Edna told Rita to start singing. We, I'm like, you know, we, we are pitiful. Now, during this time, there was another guy in another bed in the same room, but we had pulled the curtain around him and close the curtain on the man, right? So we still singing, we still trying to open windows. We still have no idea this man is making his transition. Me and Edna still back talk, talking about the Mavericks. So Pastor P don't say anything else. He don't say nothing. Finally, the lady say, have y'all called anybody? We like, well, no, she ain't trying to help us with the Mavericks. Is still, this woman had not told us that he's making his transition. So it was so funny. I think Myra, was you there too? They finally said, so, is, did, he, did he do it? Rick Jordan was there too. Rick, yep. And we were all like, you know, this is crazy that this man has made a transition and we trying to do something for the Mavericks. That's what we were doing. So now Rick tell everybody, okay, y'all, now that we know that's happening and everything, Rick said, well, you know what? We need to go down to the lobby and we need to pray because you know we're going to call half a Concord now to come up to the VA hospital. They go, so I said, well, you know what, Jean says she's on her way, so I'm going to wait on Jean. You know, oh, scary Diane, I'm waiting on Jean, right? So just as me and Jean getting ready to pass the key, we getting ready to walk out that office, out that room, that man said, well, can y'all at least open the curtain? I said, oh, Jesus, he ain't gone, he ain't gone. I'm like, oh, God. Now you talk about somebody ran out of the hospital. <laughs> oh, we had forgot all about there was a man behind the curtain, y'all. I thought Pastor Peter told us. He told us he went from open the window to open that curtain. I'm like, y'all know this ain't me. This ain't me. But you guys, my friend, know how much I love her. Know I'm scared, but guess what? And don't y'all believe Edna Pemberton won't fight? Ask Marvin Crenshaw. Yeah, Edna Pemberton will fight. She tell y'all the time. I'm from Chicago. But I want you to know that when you got somebody like Edna Pemberton in your pocket, in your hand, in your bag, you don't have nothing to worry about because she has faith that can move mountains. In. And I just want you to know how much we love you. Rick Jordan, if you can come and close us out in prayer, you're going to do another birthday celebration? We're going to sing happy birthday. Yeah, that's what you're going to do now? You're not going to sing, though, right? Okay, can I just <laughs> Okay, two last things, you all. We want to thank the caterer. Honestly, the food was great. Thank yes. you. Check out our black art in the back. I painted all of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And also, you all, right down this hallway, there's a uh, museum that honors black women. It's called Black Girl Magic. Please stop by real quick on your way out. And I'm going to... Huh? Shelly Green. Called Shelly. Shelly Green. Diane said, get up here right now. And Cash has some wonderful dress over there, and she does take cash. <laughs> all right, you all, I'm going to sing happy birthday, and y'all, no, I'm just kidding. Read okay, on one, two, three. See the wonder Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, shaking her head.
Dr. Terry Flowers. Y'all know that he really loves you. Dr. Flowers don't come from past South Dallas. Dr. Terry Flowers, thank you so much for coming out. He really loves you, Eddie. Shelly, just come say something before Rick Joy closes out in prayer. This is Edna Fawn in crime, too. He just low key with it. What's going on, Pim? Pim and I go way back. Her husband and I were Marines. We, uh, can, Talk can you hear me? Put your mic a little closer. Get your mic closer. <laughs> closer. Get under the <laughs> Well, Pam and I go way, uh, way back. We worked on staff at Concord, and she's been the same ever since I know her. I take Pam down any dog alley in Dallas <laughs> and wouldn't be afraid because she'll fight her. She'll stand up wherever she is. You can depend on her. Um, it's just a great joy for me to. Uh, to have met you, it's a privilege to uh, to say that I know such Pim, and so I know how to drop a, a dime too. If I need something, I say, "Well, I know such Pim," oh, yeah. so you can't do nothing to me. Uh, so we go way uh, way back, and I just love her, and I uh, thank you so much for this celebration, and you deserve it. God bless you, girl. Thank you, thank you, Shelly. Y'all, before we go, there's plenty of food. They got to go containers. So make sure you go and get your dinner for tonight, okay? So get your to-go containers. I hope I didn't miss anyone. Did we cover everything, Curtis? Also, don't y'all forget to take a picture of Edna carrying the trophy during the Olympics. Thanks to our late brother, George Woody. So thank you all so much. Rick Jordan, everybody got everything taken care of? All hearts and minds are clear? You have a remark? Uh, you know I went over to the floor for remarks. Well, come on, man. Yeah, come on. It's okay. Come on. It's okay. And the life of everybody to talk. Come on. There you go, honey. Hey, Edna. This is Brendan. Brendan and I. Brendan. I'm Brendan. Edna and I go back. I met Edna in 1950 something. She walked into Carter Elementary School. She came from uh, Betsy Ross. And we were partners ever since. And when you say that she's a fighter, I know. Yes, because we fought a many of battles in grammar school, high school. And she was my maid of honor. And I just lost my husband last year. So I know some of the pain that she went through. And I wanted to be here to celebrate her birthday because that is something else that we have in common. Both of us are in March. We're like four days apart. And it's just good to be here with her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Mikey Green, thank you so much, Pastor Mikey Green. I can only call him Mikey. I'm the only person that can do that. Pastor Mikey Green. Oh, and you all, if you have cards, Rita, raise your hand. Rita, if you all have cards, please give them to her daughter, Rita, or you can give them to her daughter, Myra. I said the daughters now. Myra or Rita, give them to her. Amen. Let us, let us stand first, okay? And grab somebody's hand. And first of all, just grab somebody's hand and tell them I love you. All right. You know I love you. Tell I love you. You know I love you. Tell somebody I love you. Even the musician, tell somebody I love you. 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 I love This lady was nothing but love, you know. Love for the disenfranchised. Love for people that love Jesus. And she just is a lover of people, man. I'm so grateful to be her neighbor and the past, be her church member, and be her prayer warrior. Call me many hours for prayer. Yes, sir. So let us do the benediction. Benediction. First of all, I want you to, the person on your right, ask that person's name on your right. I know your name. I'm on your left. I'm on your left. I'm on your right. Okay. You know I love you. Okay. Ask that person's name. You got it? Got it. Now, you know that person's name, right? Yep. I want you to add one more person. This is their number. I want you to add one more person. This is their number. That person and Edna Prince, I want you to pray for her, okay? I want you to pray for that person on your right 
and Elton. I promise you. Now, who who you praying for? What's the first one? Come on. Who, who's the who's the first one we pray for? Person on my what? On my right. Person on my what? Right. Okay. And the next person we're gonna pray for is who? Edna Pemberton. Okay. She that person needed, and, and, and we all gonna do it out loud at the same time. Out loud at the same time. Don't worry about what the neighbor said. No, what they just said out loud. Come on, everybody, pray for your neighbor and the other Come on, come on, come on. Let me hear your voices. Come on, let me hear your voices. Come on, let me hear your voices. You can pray, can you? Some of y'all not moving your lips. You just looking at me. I know you pray. I know you pray. Come on, you can do it. 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 I, I know it's something new to. I know it's something new to some of y'all. Some of y'all ain't been in church a long time. <laughs> but but this lady loved Jesus. She she loved the Lord. She loved the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now this have I been there. Now to him who is able, the only wise and true and living God. Nobody but Jesus the Christ. So I pray you will pray for. Sister in the primitive, give her a long life, Lord. And give her good health to go with it, Lord. I pray you will meet every need that she have, and she can glorify you, continue to glorify you, even right now, God. Thank you for her life, Lord. She loved the disenfranchised. She loved people, Lord. So we thank you for the life that she lived in Dallas, Texas. Now continue to give her strength in her body, even right now. We thank you and we trust you and we honor your name. And we'll give you glory, we'll give you praise. Because you're such a good God and a loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Such a pleasure to be here celebrating you today with all of your friends and family. Wouldn't want to be doing anything else at this time but this. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Edna Pemberton. Thank you for all you've done in the community. Thank you for your support. And I'm glad to be here for your birthday. I'm, I'm sure you'll be surprised. But this is Judge Kim Cook's happy birthday. Happy birthday to the, to the uh, Honorable Miss Edna Pemberton. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss P. Hi, Miss P. Happy birthday. You're a pillar of this community. Not sure we'd be here without you. Uh, have a great birthday. Hi, Miss P. Happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing one. Happy birthday, Miss P. Miss Pemberton, the, the Black Moses, whatever they, the stuff they call you, you are the epitome of community service. You are a mentor to me. You might not even know it. And I, I patted myself after you, and I thank you for everything you've done for me, the community, and just everybody. You are well loved, and it, it, you deserve everything you get. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton, the Sergeant Bedford. You know, we love you, we adore you. You are the, uh, uh, we call ourselves Miss Pemberton's Army because of how uh, influential you've been to our unit. We're looking forward to many more years of working with you. Thank you, Miss Pemberton. All right. Come on, y'all. Come on. When well, you're by yourself. Ah, we do it together. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday, Happy Ms. birthday, Miss P. P. Wish you more life, more grace, and thank you for all that you do for us and the community. Thank you. Happy birthday. We are what we call an OG, triple OG, 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 <laughs> and I salute you. Here you go. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miss P, and we love you, and thank you for all that you've done for the community of Dallas. And again, happy birthday. Now you know your age is the new 45. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> happy birthday, and uh, this is Sandra Jackson, Judge, because you helped me to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm so grateful to God for all that you have invested in me, invested in our community, and invested in our state. I love you, sis. God bless. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss P. Miss, oh no, excuse me, Miss Southwest Center Mall, Miss Redbird Mall, Miss Redbird Mall again. It's all because of you that this, this area of Dallas is what it is. Thank you. All right. 
Miss Pemberton. I am Bernetta Jo Young. I'm here today representing Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett's office. She couldn't be here today. She's in D.C., but she wanted to send you a very special happy birthday. Hi, and I'm Carrie Goodwin. I also work for Jasmine Crockett, and I've been knowing uh, Miss B since 1973, and we haven't uh, missed a beat. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Miss P. This is Ryan Baring. Uh, we met when I was doing AmeriCorps Vista with Mayor Rawlings' Scruff South program. And uh, I hadn't seen you in some years and missed you and had to get out and see you today. Happy birthday. Hi, Miss P. Sam Fuentes with Interbank. I had the pleasure of meeting you a few weeks back when I presented at uh, Curtis Corbin's presentation here or um, event here at the deck. Um, happy, happy birthday. Thank you for having us here. From Polk Terrace Neighborhood Association, happy, happy, happy birthday. We love you for all the things that you have done for our community. Take care of yourself. Happy birthday, Miss P. We love you so much. You've been such a great person to me. Love you. Sir, I love you so much. Thank you for being the man beneath my wings. Hello, Sister P. We love you. We love the example that you always have set. Hello, Edna. This is Gretchen. We, I love you, and you have set the bar very high for us to try to reach. Thank you for all that you've done for the community. Happy birthday, Miss P, the warrior, my mentor, my friend. I love you, lady. It's not a picture, it's a video. Oh, it's a video. Tell her happy birthday. Okay, I'm sorry. Happy birthday, Miss P. This is from your speaker. Love you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mrs. P. It's a blessing and an honor to see you. Bless you. Hello, Ms. Edna Pemberton. It's Chris and Dominique Howell here. We want to say happy birthday to you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for this community. You've inspired so many people. Certainly, you've inspired us. We do the work that we do today because of people just like you who made a way for us to do it, and we're grateful for you. Enjoy your day. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. Miss P, I just want to wish you a very happy birthday. We love you. I'm wishing you birthday blessings and many, many more birthdays to come. Thank you for all you're doing for us. We love you, Miss P. All right. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Wish you many, many more to come. And the Pimple and a happy birthday and appreciate all the work that she's done for the community. Happy birthday. Yeah, good to see you. Okay. Happy birthday, Mother P. You are love. You know how much I love you and I hope that this time celebrates you and the great woman that you are. Love you. Happy uh, birthday, Beverton, James Stokes, Janine Stokes, and uh, love you and just uh, happy to celebrate in this time with you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Sister P. I love you so much. I am so grateful for everything you've done for me, my family, the city of Dallas. Like, you are so incredible. You have made such an impact on the world. We appreciate you for everything. You're such a joy and a light in the world. Happy birthday. Love you. Okay. Happy birthday, Lady P. From knowing you all of my life since a small child, you giving me my very first job at 16. Been I say 15 at 16 at Kmart and being there with me all these years we have done so much together I love you so much happy birthday and we're here to celebrate yeah happy birthday lady P love you I want to just say happy birthday, Miss Pemberton, on behalf of uh, everyone that you've inspired, uh, me included as well, Randall Ryan. Thank you so much for your love and support uh, to, throughout the entire community, throughout your entire life. Uh, happy birthday once again. 
Miss P, I cannot just there's there aren't enough words to tell you how much I love you, how much I appreciate you, and how much it is an honor to be here to celebrate this day with you. <laughs> I, I don't think he has enough film to just say all that you poured into me and, and, and gotten me to where I am today. I love you and I just thank you so much for all that you poured into my life. I cannot thank you enough. Happy birthday, my love. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. This is Andre Butler. We're just wishing our lovely Queen of Oak Cliff, Miss Edna Pemberton, a happy birthday. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication. Thank you for grooming the community and the next generation of leaders. We wish you many, many more successful birthdays. And to the whole Pemberton family, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you all later on in the year. Congratulations, Miss Edna Pemberton. We love you. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. We appreciate you so much. We love what you do for our community. You have a great birthday. Can't hear you. Okay. Hey, Miss P. This is Laura Johnson, and I just want to say happy birthday to you. I miss you, and miss us working together, and I pray that you have another blessed birthday. Happy birthday, Miss P. We love you. We thank God for you. You have blessed so many of our lives. We can never say thank you enough. We love you. Hi. Hi, family. You guys, this is such an awesome occasion. And this is my ride or die. My hope to die. My ride when I don't die. My ride when I do die. Y'all know that's Edna Pemberton. I mean, Edna is there anytime, any place. So I just want to say happy birthday and many, many more to come. I love you, my sister. Hey, Miss P, Mama P, happy, happy birthday. We love you so much. We thank God for you every day. Looking forward to many, many more. God bless. Miss P, you know how much I love you and I appreciate you, Miss P. You are, you know, you are what you mean to me, and I appreciate everything you do. Yeah, Keep doing you. you. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday, Miss P. We love you. Yeah, I love the wonderful Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Many more. Happy birthday, Miss Pemberton. Happy birthday, Miss P. Miss Pemberton. 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 Miss be here in this celebration. No, no, the one. Sister P, I just want to tell you once again, God loves you and I love you. This is Joanne Bouye. I want to say God will bless you with many, many more birthdays. He's been carrying you. He's been keeping you. He will continue to sustain you. Much love, Joanne.